Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can create precise interactive animations for your characters by combining props with some powerful animation tools including Reach Target and Curve Editor in iClone 8. In this video, we'll look specifically at the actions of hammering and sawing. This tutorial utilizes some motions that come with the Motions for Construction pack which you can find in the Reillusion Content Store. Let's start off with the hammering scenario. You can see that the motion is all set up, but the props are currently stationary. The first thing we want to do is link the props to our character's hands. Just make sure you have the prop selected, and in the Attributes tab of the Modify panel, you'll find a link section. Just click Pick Parent, and then pick your character's respective hand to complete the link. You'll see now that the props will follow along with the character's hand movements. What I'm going to do next with my nail prop selected is go up to Animation at the top and select Flatten All Motion with Constraint. I'm doing this because we will be using the Curve Editor to modify it further. Now this command will create a clip that goes the entire length of your project, so what you want to do is break the clip at the last frame of the actual animation, and then delete the extraneous part at the end. From there, I'm going to right click on the clip and select Sample Animation Clip which will produce some optimized keyframes in the animation layer track which we can use with our Curve Editor. You can use the F12 hotkey to open the Curve Editor, and choose the X, Y, or Z tracks for position to show those tracks, and then frame at the top of the Curve Editor to zoom the entire clip into view. For simplicity's sake, next I'm going to delete all of the keyframes in the clip aside from the very first and last ones. After that, I'm going to copy the first keyframe and paste it to the last frame, which ensures a perfect loop and also stable prop position while maintaining the rotation. When we play back, you'll see now that the position is stationary, while the original rotation values are still there. However, the hand animation is now separate from the prop. So let's go ahead and utilize the Reach Target tool next. With the character's left hand selected at frame 1, simply go up and click on Select Target and Keep Current Pose, and select the nail. After that, the hand will now be constrained to the nail at that point for an accurate result. In this next scenario, we're going to use similar tools and techniques to create an accurate sawing animation. Again, the same initial issue with the hands is present, however this time we're going to take a slightly different approach and first use Reach Target to fix our character's left hand and feet into position. For the left hand and left foot, I'm going to use the same Select Target and Keep Current Pose and constrain them to the box he's standing on. You'll see that they will now remain stationary upon playback. Next, we want to link the saw to the right hand of the character, so it will follow along with the position change of that hand. The motion of the saw still looks a little awkward in this case, so let's refine it a bit. First I'm going to again select the prop, and then go into the Animation menu and select Flatten All Motions with Constraint. Again, we can go to the last frame of the active animation, and break the clip to get rid of the extraneous clip data following our actual animation. Next, let's open up the Animation Layer tool by using the F11 hotkey. You'll see there are two layers by default. The Base Motion layer contains the raw motion clip data, and once you unlock it, you can open up the Curve Editor once again with the F12 hotkey to see the keyframed animation data curves. This time, we're going to look at the Rotation X value. If I select a certain range and move it up a bit, you can see how it affects the X rotation value of the saw in the viewport. Since a saw generally wouldn't be tilting that way when it's cutting through something, we need to resolve that. In this case, I'm going to use a slightly different technique to select all of the X rotation keyframes after the saw is in place. From there, I'll go up to the Curve Editor menu and select Scale Keys. This brings up some gizmos above and below the curve, which allow you to narrow or expand them thereby restricting or increasing the values of all the selected keyframes. In this case, I'm scaling them down to around negative 5, which will ensure that from that point on, there will be no rotation along the x-axis of the saw. 
Okay, so now it's looking better, but the position of the saw is still moving from side to side. Let's fix this by using the look at feature. I'm using the little cube in front of the saw as a dummy point where we can constrain the look at point of the saw to. So let's go ahead and do that by selecting the saw, going to pick target in the look at section of the attributes tab, and then selecting that dummy cube. We will need to adjust the look at axis here. In this case, it will be negative X. Finally, we want to have the character's hand constrained to a reach target as well in order for proper animation results. In this case, I'm using the same select target and use current pose and selecting the saw prop as the target. Okay, we're set to go here, but we can add one more final touch. As the character continues to saw, we probably want the saw itself to move downwards. For that, we can simply just move the dummy prop further down as the animation progresses, which will add a transform position keyframe for the cube. You can fully control the position and rate of movement of this dummy as you wish. The result is that the saw will slowly progress downwards as the character continues to saw. You can easily tweak the results here using the technique shown, however for now we'll just end off this tutorial. Thanks for watching everyone, hopefully you learned a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.